Next week, the conservative Supreme Court is set to hear oral arguments in a case that could end up gutting Medicaid. Medicaid, of course, is the state healthcare program that is given to low income individuals, covering up to 76 million low income Americans across the country. Now, the case that the Supreme Court will be making a ruling on is known as Health and Hospital Corporation of Marion County versus Tlefsky. Now, this is a case out of Indiana, Indianapolis to be specific. Tavlevsky, George Tavlevsky to be specific, was a patient at this nursing home who was found to have been given all sorts of drugs to sedate him, which goes against Medicaid regulations, right? So this was a Medicaid recipient going to a nursing home that was operated by the state and it turned out that the, you know according to the accusations this nursing home was giving him all sorts of drugs to sedate him that they weren't supposed to give him right now before we get to the details of this case and why it's so important as it pertains to Medicaid it's important to understand how Medicaid works Medicaid is administered by the states based on Funding that has been provided to the states by the federal government and the state enters a contract with the federal government, meaning it agrees to the regulations and the rules pertaining to that funding. In order for the states to get that funding from the federal government, they have to agree to abide by these regulations. Now, according to the lawsuit that was filed by Tavlevsky, who has since passed away, he was given drugs which violated the regulations and the, you know, the rules for the funding. As it was given from the federal government to the states. Now, in 2020, total federal Medicaid spending was more than $670 billion. But the federal government offers money to each state only if the state agrees to use this money to provide health care to eligible recipients and to comply with certain other conditions. Now, this is relevant to the case that the Supreme Court will hear because of this reason. Now, the plaintiffs in Tavlesky. Uh, accused the defendants, an Indiana health system operated by local government officials and a private company that manages nursing homes, of violating several provisions of federal law governing nursing homes, including one that prohibits those facilities from using psychotropic drugs for purposes of discipline or convenience and not required to treat the residents' medical symptoms. Currently, at least one of these legal requirements can be enforced through, this is important, private lawsuits, meaning that a patient who believes that their rights under federal Medicaid law have been violated can sue the alleged violator, in this case, the state, through the federal courts, okay? Now, the defendant in this case, the hospital, the Health and Hospital Corporation of Marion County, what they are arguing in this case is that the plaintiff's right to sue should should not be a right at all. That should be thrown out. Their ability to sue the state over the way they administer the Medicaid funds should not happen under the federal courts. So let me give you the details on that. Section 1983 is the law that permits state officials and in certain circumstances, private individuals implementing state programs to be sued in federal court if they deprive someone of any rights, privileges or immunities secured by the constitution and laws. But going back to the Tavlesky case, rather than litigating whether they did or didn't violate the laws protecting nursing home patients, the defendant, again, the Health and Hospital Corporation of Marion County, is asking the Supreme Court to strip Medicaid recipients or patients of their ability to bring such lawsuits entirely. So think about what this means. This means that there's really no way to enforce the regulations pertaining to that federal funding that is given to the states to administer for their Medicaid programs, right? And the federal you know, government can actually go after the state if they're not using the money properly or if they're not abiding or complying with those regulations. But what would the end goal be? 
taking federal funding away from those states, which would only exacerbate the problem and take important Medicaid funds away from low income individuals within the state. So it's a little bit of a mess and I'll get to the details in a moment, but it does appear that this pro corporate conservative Supreme Court is poised to side with the defendants here. Okay, so let me break down a number of things here. First, let's start with the Supreme Court. Um, so I hate activist judges and you may think, wait a minute, I've heard conservatives say that uh, that the liberal justices are activists, that nonsense. It's actually not nonsense to be fair to them, right? In the past, uh, liberal judges, justices have been activists. And uh, if you watch the Young Turks regularly, you know I'm actually fairly conservative on judicial issues. I don't even think Roe was decided correctly. I think Roe's great law, but the justices shouldn't have done that. So in this case, uh, are the justices going, uh, being conservative if they uh, do what Anna has suggested here? No, it is not the conservative position at all. They're being activists and they're saying, yeah, there's 50 years of precedent, let alone over 100 years of precedent on the issue of state versus federal uh, that is at the core of this case. But we don't care about precedent at all. We don't care what happened before. This case is not close, guys. I'm telling you, judicially, I'm pretty conservative. This is not at all conservative. This is right wing judges going, we don't care about judicial philosophy. Right. We don't care. We just want the Republicans to win. We want to end Medicaid if they go in that direction. Remember, they haven't ruled yet. But there's some strong evidence to, to suggest that they're certainly considering it. Okay, now let's talk about the uh, impact on Medicaid, as Anna alluded to, right? So, number one, if people sue, then they, there's a good way to get redress, and then people, those states are worried about losing money, so they actually do follow the rules in the current system. Mm -hmm. Republicans don't want them to follow the rules, they want them to discriminate on Medicaid and hopefully destroy Medicaid, right? So, now if the justices overturn the current system, what would have to happen is the federal government would have to come in and go, okay, you're doing it wrong. So either we're gonna cut all of your Medicaid funding to punish you. But wait a minute, that defeats the whole point. That, that means that everybody in that state isn't gonna get Medicaid. The Republicans are very happy. They're like, oh, good, we crush the poor even more and we'll give more to the rich, right? So that's a terrible outcome. If they cut Medicaid a little bit to punish them, well, here's an example that Vox used that I thought actually was an excellent example. What's the first thing Florida's gonna do? Mm -hmm. They're gonna say, "Oh, you know what? We don't think that trans citizens should get any Medicaid at all. Because we're worried that they're gonna use it for hormone therapy, whatever they're gonna make up. But they're gonna strip them of all of their Medicaid privileges. By the way, that's barely a hypothetical. It's almost guaranteed that they'll do that. Mm -hmm. And then they'll expand it to everyone who's in the LGBTQ community, they'll deny people who are gay of being able to get Medicaid, et cetera. Guaranteed, lock it in, write it down in stone. If the Supreme Court rules this way, DeSantis and almost all other red states will begin to do this, okay? So once they do that, and the federal government, if it is held by a Democrat, the presidency, will then say, okay, we're gonna cut part of your Medicaid to punish you for applying it wrong, right? And you say, great, before we were denying just trans people, now that you cut part of my Medicaid, I don't have the money for gay people either. Or hey, look at that, I don't have the money for black people, I don't have the money for poor people, which the whole, poor people is the whole point of Medicaid. It's to make sure they don't right. die in the streets, right? So this will definitely, definitely allow Republicans to gut Medicaid and, and, and maybe even completely end it. And did they ever vote on it? No, and that's why I hate activist judges. The Supreme Court has been ruling in favor of corporations and robbing us of our democracy for over 50 years now. And here comes the same conservative activist judges, not conservative judicially, conservative politically, to come in and rob us of our rights without a single goddamn vote again. Yeah, that's exactly right. And they have no problem breaking with established precedent or anything like that. And remember, the main goal here is to gut Medicaid. And when the Affordable Care Act was passed and it would actually enhance the amount of federal money that could go to states for Medicaid, Republican governors rejected it. They decided, no, we'll just allow our low income constituents to suffer with no health care coverage, just to make a point about how we're rejecting this federal money for Medicaid. Okay, so with that said, let's talk about why I'm arguing that it appears the Supreme Court is poised to side with the defendants here. 
It's not because, not simply because they're pro corporate conservative judges. It's because of some signs, some signals we've seen from them in the not so distant past. So let's talk about some of this, some of the other cases that have been involved in this and and how Supreme Court justices have kind of commented on it. So. Alarmingly for Medicaid beneficiaries, three current justices, Chief Justice John Roberts and Justices Clarence Thomas and Samuel Alito, joined Antonin Scalia's opinion in Armstrong v. Exceptional Child Center, that was in 2015, which argued that the modern jurisprudence permitting Medicaid beneficiaries to sue does not generally apply to contracts between a private party and the government. So uh, let, let me give you a little more of that and then uh, we can kind of decode what, what the argument is here. There is a little bit of hope. So Armstrong was not a section 1983 case, right? Remember section 1983 is that reconstruction era law that would allow for these Medicaid recipients uh, to sue in federal court, right? Now let me continue. So it's unclear if the justices who joined Scalia's opinion in Armstrong intended to cut off suits filed under the reconstruction era law. Okay, so what what do I mean by reconstruction era law? And what was the whole point of section 1871? So in the Civil Rights Act of 1870, I'm sorry, the Civil Rights Act of 1871, Congress created such a trigger, a broadly applicable private right of action for individuals who have had a federal right violated by the state. Okay, so that's like the gist of what the law is. And the argument here is, well, it's a contract entered between the federal government and the state. And so since it's between the federal government and the state, the private citizen doesn't have the right to sue in federal court over the state breaking the contract. Okay, that actually is by far the most important part. It's even more important than the fact that this would destroy Medicaid. How could it be more important than that? Because then the states can do whatever the hell they want and the federal government can't do anything about it. If you take away section 1983, we're back to Jim Crow years. Whether it's the South or anywhere else, they could just massively start discriminating. And there's not a goddamn thing the federal government can do about it. Right. And so the Supreme Court, well, we're gonna see, we're gonna see how radical they are. And by the way, on the Medicaid issue, if it's you got a Democratic president, you're in that conundrum that we talked about earlier. If you cut the Medicaid, you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. Uh, if you do nothing, by the way, well, then you're gonna let the Republicans just rewrite any part of the Medicaid that you like. But what if it's a Republican president? Well, the Republican president is gonna say to the states, yeah, gut it, destroy Medicaid, and I won't I won't do anything about it. Okay, well, then there goes Medicaid. And and one of our members just wrote, and I love our members, and they he explained, yeah, Mitch McConnell's been, now that they have the Supreme Court, they're hurry up and trying to destroy every part of the government that actually helps individuals, Social Security, Medicare, etc., right? And that's exactly right. And so the final piece of this is, like I said, if they get rid of that section 1983, we're back to the worst period in American history where the state's rights guys will use that as an excuse to discriminate against anybody and everybody that likely isn't white or straight. Yeah, I mean, and, and more importantly, the one thing that's clear about the Supreme Court just the conservative Supreme Court justices is how much they despise the administrative state, how much they despise social spending programs, and the whole reason why the Federalist Society chose them on their list as potential Supreme Court nominees is because they would dismantle the administrative state. Yeah, and guys, understand why that's so important, why that's part of an enormous part of corporate rule. So we say Federalist Society picks these judges because that's the organization they go through and they just literally hand it to Trump and the other Republican presidents. And then they go, yes, sir, of course, sir. And they do what the Federalist Society tells them. But who is the Federalist Society? All the Federalist Society is, is a front group for corporate rule. Yep. So it's corporations that fund Federalist Society. And then they tell them, hey, you're to pick the most brutally pro-corporate judges and make them Supreme Court justices. We've told you this many times, both Kavanaugh and Gorsuch ruled in cases where they said corporations are allowed to kill their employees and have no consequences. That is unbelievable. They're the most awful, horrific, 
judges in the whole country. And that's why they were picked. Yeah, and that's by the specifically way- specifically why they were picked. What Jake is saying isn't even hyperbole. The case of the truck driver who was told to continue working during a winter storm after his, his truck broke down or something his like that. His truck broke down on the side of the road. He used to ask for permission to go home. And they said permission denied. He said, I'm freezing to death. I think I have frostbite, which by the way, he did have frostbite. If I stay out here, I'm going to die. And they said, stay out there and die if you have to. You're not to, to drive that truck because it might hurt the wheel of the truck and cost us a couple of dollars. Yep. So when he, uh, they, and they did fire him because he drove home and didn't die, but he did have frostbite. Gorsuch was the only judge out of all the judges that saw through all the different layers that it went through that said, yes, he should have stayed out there and died. Insane. And so that's who they are though. That's, that's who that's why they picked them. That's why they picked them. So when they get rid of the quote unquote administrative state, that what are the two things that happens? That means you're allowed to deregulate all the corporations. So that means there's no cops on Wall Street, there's no cops overlooking corporations. So corporations will then go about killing us more systematically. And like for example, health insurance companies cause the death of 45,000 Americans every single year. Oh, You didn't pay enough, you're dead, okay? You don't have insurance, you die in the streets. Now if you cut Medicaid, a lot more people are gonna die in the streets. And why are they doing it? So you force them into private insurance. So now a lot more won't be able to afford private insurance, but we'll make an extra couple of dollars from the people that we squeeze yep. while all the rest die. And Gorsuch and Kavanaugh will be like, yes! And let alone Alito Thomas, etc. So guys, this is barbaric corporate rule. And the Supreme Court is their number one weapon in doing that. Look, I wrote about a giant chapter in this in my book. On that alone, justiceiscomingbook.com. It's coming in about September or so. But these guys took over our government and handed it over to corporations. The deregulation and 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 of course, if you can't get government help, you're going to be more indentured servants of corporations. And that's exactly what they want. This is as extreme a case as it gets. Yep. Except one other Supreme Court case they're considering, which would allow the state's legislatures just to decide who won elections, no matter who they vote, the people voted for. Those two cases, if they go in the activist direction, we're totally screwed. Democracy is gone, and we live under the most brutal corporate rule you'll ever see in your life. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, we really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.